Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to the LJL officially unofficial coverage of the LJL 2020 Summer Split Playoffs Round 2 Match 2 Game 2 Crest Gaming Act versus Detonation Focus Me and gentlemen, we saw a decisive victory over for DFM Coming into Game 2 though what are your thoughts, expectations, and some of your thoughts around CGA now? Because they were the highest seed. They had side selection. They should have been prepared. Seems like it wasn't for them. So I liked the Shen. Like I said, we've been waiting to see that for mm -hmm. a while. Um, I keep looking over that draft, and because, of course, there are only, only the three of us, and we have a lot to, on our plate at the same time, don't necessarily have some time to take, take a step back and look at things holistically. Mm -hmm. I look at CGA's comp, and I imagine that with the Lilia first pick. They banned that. If you have that, that comp looks a lot better in my eyes, actually. Hmm. One of my problems now is that if you're banning Lilia, which is a first pick worthy champion as V3 showed in their series versus Sengaku, is that hamstringing you? Because even if you don't ban it, if that forces CGA to ban it, isn't that more important in its own way? So I think that CGA have some issues with champion pool issues, and I think part of that is Unica. Yeah, I mean, the other question would have been something like a hacker in perhaps as well, mm. to team up with that Shen and look for mm. harder engages. I know that's another Lorange champion into their comp though that's what yeah, I'm true but you can ignore a lot of the cc by using your unstoppable there's a lot of cc yeah. <laughs> I mean, true <laughs> enough it's just very good right now it's more what i'm thinking yeah and there was a lot of options there they didn't have to ban the Lilia. they could be forcing that over on dfm side but yeah it could be a problem with champion pool issues for unica which uh, might be hamstringing the rest of the yep. team Gentlemen, though, DFM looked very confident in their victory, decisive, they were aggressively going as a full unit, playing around the map, and we already mentioned in post-game that Cyrus was happy to give up his lane, not fight Arya, and this was something that we've already started to highlight a weakness of CGA Nymera. Hmm, yeah, uh, sorry, what was that weakness in terms of Cyrus Cyr just walking around the map? No, 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 um, Arya's weakness, that CGA rely on Arya winning lane to win game, uh, and if people don't play into the CGA's way of playing, like, don't play into Arya, we've seen oh. Ace do it, we've seen Pyrian do it, we've now seen Cyrus do it in two separate games. I, I, Is this I, a trend? I think, that, I think it doesn't actually matter who your mid laner is this game. Uh, CGA are just... They, they they lost what was meant to be a dominant CV2, or at least they didn't win hard enough to justify their game plan. Top hmm. side of the map, you know, is going to lose anyway. It was, and then of course we saw that. Um, well, the Lux almost out damaged Graves that game too. Unica was a non-factor. In fact, it got to the point where only Arya was a factor that game. And of course, when you only have one person versus a very fair rest of the ex um, enemy team, there isn't too much you can do. Yeah, you can try and make the game not about Arya. That is something we can talk about with CJ. He still tried to make himself relevant. He had the most damage in the ch to champions that game. He did pretty well for himself. It just wasn't enough to overcome the losing side lanes of CJ. Yeah, and again, we have to call it out one more time that like Arya was kind of trapped in mid. He didn't really get out to the mm. side lanes as well as he might like. And part of that was because he, he the map was dark. It's difficult to roam as a Cinder into that. But either way, the fact that Arya is trapped somewhere and that DFM were largely first to the punch, at least first to respond to a lot of plays, kind of gave them a lot of edge in those early skirmishes. Yeah, they were all over the place, and we must highlight Steel on his niddly. He, this man was everywhere on the map. He was trying to go for the first blood, was denied it because bot lane were allowed to get first blood instead for detonation focus me. But then he was diving up in that top lane with Nap. He was then going into mid lane. He was he was all over the place, securing the dragons for the team as well, and just was everywhere. First Dragon, first Rift, Dead Nation, folks, me, Steel. First Dragon did go over to CGA, actually. Oh, was it CGA's? Yeah. Uh, my they apologies. Yeah. Second and third, though, were very much DFM, yeah. so I gotta, gotta get the context. <laughs> gotta, gotta give something to CGA, because they didn't get... really get much out of that game. No, and how would, how would you, as CGA, actually try and reset yourselves and kind of prepare for this second game, especially without having side selection this time? Hmm. Well, we did see them have a very clear idea of what they wanted to do in the draft, um, considering how you compare it to Game 4 of their series versus the Hawks. They came in with that Lucian first pick. It ended up being about lane dominance in that TV2. Mm. It just didn't work out. I think they just need to have a little bit more composure. Yeah, I think for me as well, it's maybe there is a world where actually if the first blood had gone oh to them instead they could have played that lane a little bit better and maybe they'll just feel that maybe we try this all over again and it works out better this time so gentlemen are we changing predictions are we now that we've seen a game from both these teams 
Do we want to keep going with the 3 1 for you, Nymera? The th 3 I think 2? So. I think the 3 1 is looking pretty okay for me. <laughs> I've got a double down, haven't I? I'm going nowhere. I'll keep with 3 2. I really don't feel confident now in CGA, I'll be honest, but I I've already said it, so I've got to keep going for it. Feels pretty awful, if I do say so myself, <laughs> as the CGA do need to do a miracle run, but there's a chance, right? The CGA can the just crosswise. find a way. Yeah. There always is, right? I mean, we saw both of their spring playoff series go to five games, and I believe against the Jesters, I'm trying to remember if they lost the first game of that one, actually. I know that they were reverse swept by V3 in their second round. That was a bit unfortunate mm. for them. But CJ, of course, we have seen them play a large amount of other other champions. This Lucian has only been cropping up in this, this last um, series, of course, so I don't think that's necessarily something they have to stick towards. Um... So it's just a question of how do they adapt to what DFM just showed them? Do they have a way to adapt to what C uh, DFM just well, showed them? That's my issue, actually. Is like, there's a is there a playstyle problem actually, rather than just a champion pool being like, yeah, you're playing this playstyle, but if that's the problem that DFM have kind of solved how you want to play the game. Do they have any other way that they can play the game? If if that is the issue, again, I'm reaching a little bit there, yeah. and I'm being sort of worst case scenario there. But if that is the case, then CJ could be in real trouble. I mean, initialize. Do you think uh, DFM need to actually show anything new yet? They they she, they showed us a very standard comp from them, and it went perfectly fine as the script predicted. So should they do anything else? I think general gauntlet uh, best practice is don't show as show as little as you can because you know after they've won if they win this series they've still got to go in Sengoku they've still got to go into V three in the finals if they get that far. Mm, they've got a lot of matches to play still. We'll find out how they do go down with this as we've got pick and ban face. So, gentlemen, take it away. Thank you so much, Maswan. We are into pick and bans. DFM are on the blue side. CJ on the red this time out. Yeah, so we have a LeBlanc locked in for D... Well, not locked in, that one. Banned away, Lucian 2. They really do want to deny a lot of these lane dominant picks for CGA. All right, we can see it's LeBlanc, it's Lucian... But Heimerdinger is finally banned out for CGA. Um, and you can see that you know, they finally get rid of that card. Don't want to deal with it. Found it too frustrating. Even with the Syndra to kind of throw those uh, turrets around. And uh, right now, TFM have gone for those three, well, pseudo mid lane bans. We know that the Lucian does, of course, go over to Gango at two. The question is, are CGA going to ban away the Lilia? Caitlyn would have to be locked up at that point, And both are left available right now. They absolutely are, but it leaves the Caitlyn first pick up. And that means that DFM will pick it up, and Utapon has been putting a lot of time into that champion. Yeah, and we know that Utapon is a historical player of this pick. You know, it's just something which he's used to win lane. I mean, I guess Utapon and Miyashi would be the guy in the LGL who has played most of this champion, but it's not like Utapon is a slouch on it either. Okay, that does have a mean that Set has got through pick and ban and will now be picked for the CGA. Unica plays the jungle. Grendel puts a lot of time to it on the support position. Uh, and uh, we were kind of questioning, well, what is Unica's champion pool looking like a little bit? You know, he's definitely really relied on the graves a lot, but having that option to pick up the set here could be a really good option for him. Okay, and uh, the trundle is something that they actually ended up beating DFM with in the past. They did. So... Good chance that the Lilia is locked in here, and Lilia is going to be up against double brawlers to, to HP stack, because that can be quite um, good with that if it's sent HP shred alongside building Leandries later in the game, too. Instead, they're not going towards... Well, they're, they're not locking at anything action. Talk about that. This chance of the Caitlyn Lux being locked in. It is locked in. Huge uh, kill pressure in that bot lane. And the Nico locks in for Saros, which will buy them space in team fights. Again, we're assuming Saros because he's the big Nico player on the team, but there is a world where that goes top. It is a flexible champion. Mm -hmm. Could end up there as well, depending on matchups. Nico jungle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and Nico jungle. Yeah. It's, 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 I suppose you can use Tangle Burbs and Raptors. It's uh, not horrific, however, but I wouldn't recommend it. Jin locked in immediately from CJ. Gango probably been our best gin in the LGL. And this is a very different yeah. lookout from CJ already. So they're trying something different. They're on red side now, remember, as well. The FM uh, chose to have the blue side this game. Got to see what they're uh, locking in alongside that. Of course, CJ don't have to bat away anything like the Leona this game. Of course, Gang was very scary on that in game one. Said they're going to choose to ban away some junglers. I wonder if that Nidalee is going to be a ban. 
might well be a conversation to have. I know Steel's obviously gone towards things like the Graves in the past as well, so there's a world where you go towards that too. So we're going to see what uh, Unica's comfortable playing this trundle into, because a lot of these carries can be pretty terrifying. Camille is banned out because DFM definitely have used that in the past. It's mm. been one fantastic game from everyone that champion, and one with some questionable engages involved. Hmm. The problem for me now is that if DFM do lock in in Italy, then they have a faster farming matchup than the Trundle. And they do. With three sources of CC already, when you have the, the traps, the, the which, well, that's more of a follow-up CC anyway, and then the Light Binding and the Tangle Barb's ult from Nico. There's a lot of ways that Nidalee can get into a fight, land spares quite consistently as long as you're holding onto it for when that CC lands, and you haven't even locked in your top laner yet. No, they definitely haven't. Well, again, we're assuming they haven't locked in their top laner yet. There is a world where some of these champions get flexed. Uh, Zoe has got through pick and ban. That means Arya gets a hold of it. He has done pretty fantastic things for CJ on that champion before. But not this split. He's 0-2 on that pick. I was just mm. looking at it. I think that showed up on the mainstream at some point too. But he's not found the success on this. Even though in two losing games, he has a KD of 6. That's pretty good work. Which is... Pretty nasty. Uh, DFN now thinking about their top laner of choice and, of course, their jungler too. Looks like the cannon's being hovered and is being locked Oof. in. So now it is a cannon versus two very low-range brawler frontline in the set, and the trundle can lock them up in place. And two mobile backliners in the gin. The Zoe seems pretty high value to me. Pop Blossom and Slicing Maelstrom are considered something of uh, parallels. When you have them both on the same squad, you ignore one and suddenly you're in trouble you know, with the other. This would be a huge game for Agragus. If you could somehow fit Agragus into your team comp, either fit it in as support for Grendel or have it top plane AP. <laughs> Kindred locks in, by the way. Yes. Very good into the Trundle. Steel pulled this out. The last playoffs has a good individual matchup. Can get onto the back line too. I really need some disengage from CGA. There's a lot to be aware of here. Okay, so that's a way of keeping your back line safe while uh, the Nico and the Kennen go forwards. Grendel decides he's going to lock <laughs> wait, 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 is this his first in... ever Blitzcrank? Might I'm trying be. to remember if he's played it before. But that means that Set's going to be flexed the top lane versus this Kennen as well. It's worth pointing that out there. We don't know who, how many times Grendel played it. We're pretty sure it is. I kind of oh, we'll like wait. We'll wait uh, to see Blitzcrank where... into something squishy like a Lux. Yeah, and remember, the there is a hook, there is a pillar, there is a... Uh, not captive audience? No, that's no, it's Deadly Flourish Tentacles. Yeah, a Deadly captive Flourish is the mean. traps. Yeah, I know, they, they, they changed the names around and it still frustrates me to this day. But there's still, there are th the, when Blitzcrank succeeds, it's normally when there is something to set up for it, right? And something which is throwaway enough that you don't have to use the long cooldown for it. If you then catch Lux or Caitlyn with that hook, they die pretty quickly in this comp. The other thing is, that actually, Blitzcrank into Kindred isn't bad if you can position yeah. yourself right, because you can pull someone out of the ultimate, yeah. which is always the thing with Kindred. Have you got displacements? Have you got a way of someone to get someone out of that lamb's respite? Blitzcrank mm. is an option to do that. So is sure. Showstopper. And uh, speaking of that Blitzcrank again, it's not maybe the first one ever. I think it's the first one this season. No, it is the first one ever per a production, finally. Uh, found the answer to that one. And it is going to be locked into the rift. So, and in, in, I mean, there are five squishies on the side of DFM. Blitzcrank can very much uh, tangle with them. Can. On the other hand, though, if it turns into a 5v5, Caitlyn's got a few items, and then Kennen and Nico get to get onto the back line. Could be a world where DFM run over those team fights too. So I'm kind of curious sure. to see how this one plays out. There is a lot of damage on the side of DFM. I. I'm particularly worried if Saros and Abby get ahead, then the backline just does not exist for CJ. However, there is never a point in this game where a bubble or one piece of CC doesn't mean trouble for DFM. They don't really have anyone that wants to tank that stuff mm, up. No. Also, worryingly enough for me, if you do get caught with the Blitzcrank and you get silenced, it, particularly the Kindred too, right? If you're silenced, you don't get to ult. Silence knocked up, you just turn to die. Uh, your lower levels than most champions as a jungler, unless you get super fed, and uh, you're squishy because you're an AD carry. So be yep. afraid. Um, <laughs> and also, I mean, there's, there's, remember the Showstopper can just carry Kindred out the ult too. The, the Showstopper, Pella can force mm. a lot of stuff as well. I mean, I remember um, when Sengoku played DFM for the second mm. time, still started pulling out the Kindred, and that was really important when Sengoku were forcing the, the Misfortune pick, the entirety of the plus, and that was the only thing they were really playing for Yusuke Miyashi. I don't think this game is as clear, clear cut as to the stuff that you're denying with that Kindred ult, but it is still very good into that 1v1 matchup. And the 2v2 top side looking pretty strong for CGA. It is. I think it's also worth pointing out that Saros is going to have a lot of very good Glacial targets because the main engage here is set and maybe Trundle Pillar or a good Blitzcrank hook. Is well, the, or bu bubble for the thing. But actually, Glacial... you can keep the front line a long way away with the Glacial stuff from this Nico. You deny the front line, yes. But as I said, one deadly flourish, one bubble, one just lucky hook, or mm -hmm. a pillar coming in, 
you don't really get to disengage that cleanly. You have to blow a uh, flash, you have to mm. blow something else. I mean, you don't really have much else, you just have kind of flashes. Right? I think that you can use the, the Nico W to try and block the first skill shot. Yep. Um, but it's still not complete safety for DFM. No. Nope. However, we have talked about laning advantage or that other stuff. If this doesn't get to a point, well, if this gets to a point where you have like a 4,000 gold lead at 13 minutes again, um, does that really matter? Yeah, uh, you know, there's also, you know, like, as far as lanes go, it's, uh, I know Seros really rates the Nico into Zoe matchup. I think that's a pretty mm -hmm. good one. And I understand that as well. You throw the Tangle Barbs out, it's pretty easy to catch Zoe out as she portals. Cannon is a ranged matchup into set, and set in the top lane has sure. largely been l lower effectiveness as of late. So it's the, it's the Caitlyn Lux bot lane. At least from lane, you can see where DFM get pressure. Mm. But, as we said, there's a lot of ways where these squishy people get picked off by CGA. Mm. And you know you're talking about Seros being comfortable with the matchup and stuff. It kind of reminds me of the Zareth, right? And because he played, used to play Zareth and Zoe, he played that a couple of times. Um, and the thing with the Zareth is that we only saw it the two times, as far as I'm aware. We saw it the one time um, with uh, against V3 and Aces Zoe, and we also saw it versus Pyrian Zoe too. Um, because and there's a very different there's a difference between playing as someone like Ari Zoe and someone who's a lesser mid laner, right? I think that the laning advantage that you're going to get against this player is not going to be quite as high in terms of the one v one pressure than you would do against a lower tier team. Mm, yeah, we're going to have to see how that works out for sure. Ari in the last game, tried his best, but had a pretty quiet one, so it could be problematic. But they've got the setup here to maybe get Aria a little bit more involved. Okay, so we're coming back onto the rift, and uh, it's Cannon mid lane. No, it's not. It's just uh, Nico <laughs> doing, doing their thing. Uh, has gone for the Glacial, you were right in saying that, taking the teleport. And it is the cl the spell book from Aris. Like, I was about to say, has the cleanse on the Zoe? No, it has the teleport, of course, but can get access to that cleanse yeah. through uh, those uh, those balloons attached to those minions that spell thieves, or, of course, from the spell book itself. So, see if anything is going to happen level one here. Doesn't seem like yeah. it, five man fans across the board. Mm. And it will be as well. Caitlyn for the first time here in the series and for DFM as well. Mm. It is such a high priority across the globe right now. And uh, I do want to call out that is a very pretty skin for Kindred. We all love <laughs> the Spirit Blossom skin. We've been winning a long time for a skin <sighs> for Kindred as Kindred mains. Why don't I cast, the, why, why don't I cast the VCS? They played Ari that one time. Oh, why don't I do that? Uh, Love those guys that do. It, it was a pretty good Ari game as well, actually. It was, yeah. I mean, I have some issues with it, of course, because I do, because oh, I, I get to as an Ari man. I get to uh, uh, complain about that. Level 1's coming out. Remember, Lux is pretty good into this duo, too. You can start with the Light Binding as support. You absolutely can, and see what Gang wants to do. He's managed to get bush control on that second bush, but Blitzcrank knows where Lux is, and that's always a bit of a terror, too. So, mm. see how fast the feet are from both bot lanes. Light Binding and Blitzcrank Rocket Grab could be uh, pretty scary. Could do. Saros taking the paddle star. More sparkles combo at level one. Ganga walking up and the hook lands. Hook lands, but Grendel takes a lot of damage as well. Now Ganga getting shoved back as well. That hook disengages, but a lot of the health bar trade going away of DFM. I was say, pretty sure the hook does the opposite of disengages. That <laughs> he hooks in Gang, who consistently walks forward and gets another three autos like, onto Gang. Thank you for giving me mobility. <laughs> exactly, yeah, just gets them closer. It's like, it's, it's not quite the same as hooking an Alistair into your team, in fairness, you can get the pulverize in there. But we can see early on, priority going up to the Caitlyn, and this is not what you want against this lane. It's not at all. Unica, though, has path down towards the bot side, but so has Steel. Maybe looking for a gag from three. a pillar could be pretty good. Yes, he's gone for the level 3 hook misses, but that is now a flash out of gang. They're gonna get the flash out of Utapon now as a flash. Chop, Steel Still coming same. in. They're trying to get as much damage in, but now Gang goes in trouble. You can see the kindred at the back end. Utapon taken very, very low. Will fall down. But now there is this huge damage discrepancy. Unica goes down. Steel stepping forward, trying to find more, trying to get some more damage down. It's a one-for-one one overall, but the AD carry survives for CGA. They do not for DFM. They do, and there's still a flash onto Gango too. The Jin has the flash, no summoners available for DFM. The summon no summoners, the double buffs taken away from DFM. Gango's oh, backed. Gango hasn't backed and he's gonna get caught. Oh, he is. So we see the hop forwards. Here's the teleport out though. They were gonna try and bind it. That is the deadly flourish that misses. Hook, Hook though is so good and Aria is here and this time the teleport from mid lane goes the way of CGA. And Aria finds a way to not get locked into mid lane. He takes the teleport himself. Of course he did have that the last time but reacts appropriately and it is a second kill over to the Blitzcrank and Unfortunately, but we're going into replay as the scuttle falls down. 
priority for a lane is a good thing to play around, but it is not the be-all and end-all because it leaves you susceptible to those first ganks of the game. Unica comes in. We talked about how there was a kind of a jungle difference in the first game, and this time it's Utapon, which suffers that from CGA's side. Steel comes in for a good counter gank, refreshes his double buffs, but things kind of get awkward from this point because he sticks around for that second gank. And we saw what happened there because he was trying to pick off Gango, but doesn't respect the globals, and this time it's D uh, CGA. Man, I keep getting this wrong for some reason, with the good reactive play. And there's a teleport straight out. He's got Proto Belt on as well. Ah, oh, and that hook was so good from Grendel. It was. Uh, yeah. It's kind of unfortunate that the kill does go up to Grendel there. Would have been really nice to get the double buffs mm -hmm. onto your carries in mid lane or bot lane. And now we're left in this landing state again. Okay, a bit of a freeze going on roughly here, but the wave will shove out pretty swiftly, and the wave now pushing back towards CGA. Okay. Um, but the important thing now, Blitzcrank has four minutes Moby Boots. He can roam wherever he can roam, roam wherever he wants to, and is very powerful at this point in the game. Yes, he is. You can see Unipon here doing all right in terms of the CS bomb, but there's a big wave here for Gango to pick up on, and he'll be feeling pretty happy. All right, see how this lane continues to match out. It's still about a 200 gold lead to DFM, despite the kills going over with the CGA. That's just off the fact that the top lane has been By the way, well. they just missed the cannon when they had a relic stack. Uh, Grendel just altered the wrong minion. Dear, nice. That's just sad. <laughs> uh, that, 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 that's it. So game's over. Cannon's yep, done. That's it. Uh, what, what do you do now? What can you do? So, um, Cole picked up for Gango. I mean, unfortunately, didn't have that goal to try and get any of... Oh, he's walking. See, Grendel walking with Mobies, as long as he doesn't hit minion or anything, even if he misses the skill shot, he keeps having that extra movement speed. He just needs to not hit minions, and he's very hard to hit with skill shots, and gets to have that movement speed differential to try and close down on DFM's bot lane. That... You can see how those Moby Boots are supposed to be working. A Unica now roaming back down bot as well. He's seen on a ward. Thing. He's on a ward. Uh, they do sweep it out, but DFM... Wisely back away, I feel. Steel is around, but it does mean that perhaps this Trundle thinking about going for this early dragon, but instead it's retreats back worth... into his jungle, doesn't want to give over the mark on that Gronk. And, and speaking of marks, he has two already. That's He's actually, because yeah, I think he got one in that first. He did. He got uh, one on the gank, one on the scuttle. Got on one on the gank, one on the scuttle. So remember, once you get up to four marks, you get your first range mm -hmm. increase on Kindred, your auto attack range and your Q range. And plus, it gives you stuff like attack speed and extra damage on your W, I believe. Um, so I was blocking out the wave clear with the, the clone. Um, That's really irritating. It is really irritating. Of course, he does have another paddle star right now. It doesn't actually matter that much, but it feels good in the moment. Anyway, the range increase for Kindred, we talked about how this team doesn't have a front line. Actually, play looking bot lane now. Mm -hmm. Binding misses. Binding does miss, but Unica and Steel will find each other in the jungle, and that means uh, not much of a muchness right now. It's a nice turn. Much That's for nice. muchness, I like it. It's Still caught up Here comes Arya looking for something, but of course Wolf's Frenzy gives a lot of cooldown reduction on that Dance of Arrows, so... Kindred, nice and mobile, able to escape from any trouble. Grand little hex flashing, but not finding too much. And Seros continues to shove in mid. Yes. Oh, taking a bad trade. Oh, he's going to go for the 1v1. That's the portal out, though. That's fantastically played by Arya. And now Seros is in trouble. May have to flash out here. That's a good tangle barb, though, in response. Now Arya in a spot of bother. Taken very low in that 1v1. Yes, he portals out of the pop blossom, importantly so. However, Dragon is alive. Arya has no TP. We'll have to reset. And first Dragon of the game, this game looks like it's going over to DFM. Cannon's roaming down, but here comes Grendel looking to find the hook. The teleport now coming in. Steel gets knocked up, does Wait, not. misses the root! Miss the root, and that is a lot of damage. Now Gango's in trouble. Gang is in, so is Udupon, and Gang goes hook! down the hook. is fantastic. Now Nap has arrived. Cannon not here, not turning up. He is finally going to be around, and Udupon stayed alive for such a long time. Steel hopping forward, trying to find more damage. Ebby going on to Gango, but that's not the way everybody else is. Nap now in trouble, is going to show stop back in, but is now about to die as well. Unipon picks up a kill. It's a one for one overall. So one for one and oh Gango, what a sitter he misses. Doesn't get the CC. Means that Nap has to try and flash forward for any kind of CC in that fight and he just you doesn't can... find Gango it. Is Gango careful. is pretty low. Remember that it is the ult but oh, forces God. the flash out. Grendel with the hex flash over the wall. That was uh, some strong play here from the side of Grendel, who's been having a great game on this Blitzcrank after a slightly rough game on the Lux, frankly. He's been hitting a lot of unassisted hooks, and that's a very important thing to note, right? He's not had to have the CC to lead into them. Let's see what happens going right the way back to that mid lane 1v1. Arya using Oof. the timing very well, and he does get the sleep there. He ends up actually taking a pretty good trade. Unica does have water walking activated, but he doesn't end up getting anywhere near to Seros. He'd have to trade, uh, well, he doesn't have the flash to trade onto him, and of course, Steel is around the other side. 
side. I've uh, got a couple of just uh, momentary freezes on the stream. I believe that's on the Eldrails mm -hmm. and not on ours. So play them, not us. It's play them for different things, like we said. <laughs> You can see uh, the Dragon Star happens, and then this little scuffle teleport is just earlier from Nap. Ebby doesn't teleport until very late in this one. Uh, no, and uh, okay, so let's have a look at what happens here. So he does end up getting the hook at this point. But remember, this is already after the uh, first hook has already... Not the first hook, but the first uh, route is already missed from Gango. And look how well you want to steal, just try and disengage Grendel. He's walking forward with the moves, but he just doesn't get in range for the uh, the power punch. The power, mm. the power fist, that one. Yep, yeah, and uh, also walking into the bush there meant that steel was out oh, of range. Oh, it's a 3v1. It is a 3v1. Steel does not have level 6, doesn't have Dance of Arrows right now. He's dodging as best he can. Get next or knocked up, knocked down. Seros coming over, but it's just the clone. And that means Unica gets the kill there on an aggressive invade looking for that mark. The bane of kindreds everywhere. Exactly. And it's another kill to the side of CGA. This time the early game advantage seemingly going to them. This will open up the Herald start and this kindred pick being punished for the first time. Yeah, it is. It's... Just that slight gold edge, but it's going to lead to, more importantly, the objective edge. CJ got the dragon off the back of the uh, the plays that went down bot, and they'll get the... Oh, they actually did get first. Oh, yeah, that's very true. I thought those. Wow, first dragon going to the FM. I guess not. Okay, so first Herald not being started. It looks like they do just want to maybe get a reset, try and get some farm onto Unica, who's this time not been falling too far behind Steel. In fact, he's a little ahead right now. Use that sub subjugate in that kill. That's another important thing. There is no tank for Trundle to really use that ult against, but if you use that versus the first target, just having the shred onto them means they just get deleted. Couple of skill shots land on, they're just off the board. Again, a brief freeze here. This is just something that happens, of course, with the LJL and they've moved on to an online format recently. Sometimes the stream can be a little inconsistent on that. Well, end. Yeah. the global situation, of course, um, does mean that some of these things happen. And of mm. course, wherever you are in the world, we hope that you're keeping safe. Keeping hygienic too. Wash your hands. Wash your damn hands, indeed. <laughs> but Steel now has level 6, which is great news for this kindred. Lambs of Spite now available. Seros roaming up, and DFM want to take this Herald. Will Unica look to contest? He's definitely roaming up. So is Grendel. But you can see Utapon and Gang are going to try and be here too. There's no alt oh, for Gang. There is no, no alt for Gang. That is a big point, but the Herald sure to go down here. Unica backing away. Decide they can't get there in time. Of course, and uh, you know we just like to. It's like choose your own adventure book. I like to think that the FM through like they always do at Herald, and we've got a one to one <laughs> series. We got for that play. Oh, we've got the black screen of doom, but then it's turned back oh, around, cool. and you can see that uh, Herald was secured by DFM, but it's probably in trade for some plates round about in various mm. spaces. So, I mean, you know, we're talking about how Aria, wow, he's in such elo hell from game one. Uh, it's really kind of awkward. He's 2-0-2, 100% kill to Spatian. Well, Gang is that person in this game. <laughs> There's slightly less elo hell. Looks like the map is much more stable for CJ. And hopefully, we'll get to a point where CJ are in a position where they can team fight this game. We get some of these back and forth. Because DFM are also a really cool mm. team fighting team. That they are. We're kind of moving back to uh, some bit of a freeze frame here so just taking a second while we sort out some technical issues sorry about that guys hang with us and i'm sure they'll be sorted momentarily yes, whereas we get to look at our own beautiful we faces do. uh as we very see handsome today. <laughs> mass swan trying to solve things in the background working hard as always he's muted himself we can see his face there we go okay, it looks oh, wow. like we're back and there's a whoa, whoa everyone what's died happened? what's happened <laughs> okay steel's in trouble now as well and cga are snowballing this game out of control Still sure to fall as well to Arya, what? who's up here. How does this happen? Well, it looks like uh, DFM went for a play up the top side. Not there, CJ. We go away for one minute. <laughs> <You killed> everyone. <laughs> it's a double on to Arya. Why are they getting, dragon, getting too? dragon as well? Well, well, well. It's all gone wrong for DFM in this one. It's now ten kills to three. Three thousand gold leaves, two dragons. <laughs> Arya has picked four up four kills, kills onto the Zoe. Nine <laughs> stacks on that dark seal. <laughs> How did this happen? I bloody hope we get a replay. I'm throwing that one out. There it is. Okay. Tell me what happened. Um, all right. So it looks like there's a dive onto Nap. Um, they have the Kindred ult. That's why they think that they're pretty safe doing this. They can maybe outplay. Facebreaker and Haymaker coming out relatively early, oh, not getting the highest dear. value, but the, her aggro has just not been managed very well. Looks like Arya goes and uses the Nimbus Cloak, you know, that very... Mm -hmm. um, guess the move speed from double move speed from the Nimbus Cloak. I can imagine that's how it happens. I'm going to imagine also that a sleep lands at some point too. Okay, right, so Arya comes out, gets the cleanse onto oh, that one. Brilliant. Has an ignite because everyone's used... Because so many summoners... Oh my word. So you know we're talking about, oh, it's kind of unfortunate that all these kills have gone over to the Blitzcrank. Well, when you have that much damage because you're so far hard in the game. 
Nice. Cool. And another play that gets turned around <laughs> by CGA. It's now they've got a, well, three and a half thousand gold lead. This Two dragons on, uh, uh, it is a cloud rift. So that's kind of unfortunate, but it's not the worst thing ever. I mean, actually having the move speed onto Set and Trundle, particularly in this game when you're trying to close down well, these could be in spot bother here. Actually, he's gone very deep, and maybe he now gets punished for going very, very deep. Takes a lot of damage, but there is the deadly flourish. That is Seros taken pretty low. Oh, oh, oh. The curtain call turnaround. Gango is so damn good at this champion, and CGA responds with style. I appreciate the attempt, DFM, but it's a triple to Aria, and this one is going... Quadra? Absolutely the wrong way around, and the Battle Star is a nuclear warhead. Wait, now I've just flash forward to try and deny the quadra kill to Arya. He's probably whoa, he's going for a penta. He's thinking about it. Does take a little bit of damage here, but now Nap trying to come over and assist. Can they get the penta onto the Zoe? Unipon flash. He's, he's going. trying to survive alive. Best he can. The flash. Surely, no, <laughs> no, he's too late. <gasps> oh, Arya. I'm so, so sad for him. Either way, five kills off of messy skirmishes. This is what we expected out of CGA coming into this series. Not necessarily fighting around objective timers, but fighting around just when a fight presents itself. Unicaz has ult again. He's not behind in this game, which means he can tank himself up so oh, much damage. Man. We see the first damage coming in from the Zoe. And look at this, the sleep landing there and doing that into a gen ult seems pretty nasty to me. And because that kill comes through, Unica getting the assist, the Trundle pass means that the extra HP comes through. Grandel with another hook, another unassisted hook, importantly to note as well, leads to another kill, and Ari just stops, starts popping off from this point. Oh yeah, he does. That paddle saw hits like a truck, and CGA's response has been brilliant. DFM just a little way behind means that, you know, the final spot, not enough. And it means that Unica gets out. Now, Unipon just in trouble here. That's pretty much all she wrote. Is and uh, looking under the tower here. Ah, oh, the timer just turns out. You actually, I thought you had a much longer timer for that pentacle. Uh, That's very unfortunate. It is until respawns come through, so it's easier pentacles later in the game. Oh, so re so when Respawn comes through, I didn't realise that. I, I thought it was that's like, the way it is. I thought it was like a 45 second timer for You've a also got to remember that Respawn timers are partly based on your level. So I know that, but I thought, so, yeah. so I thought that um, a Pentacle timer worked on like a... So each multi-kill gets a slightly longer it delay does. for it. But it, then I didn't know I, that Respawns I can. I think you know Respawns do, I believe. That's quite interesting. So, so it, means, it basically means you can't get a Pentacle of killing someone twice, is the basic deal. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. That I does, think okay. is the idea. So you can get um, hexa kills at that point. Yes, yeah. that makes sense. Okay, that's rather unfortunate. So later in the game, it would have been a Penta anyway, right? Right now, Arya is insanely fed. 8,000 gold at 16 minutes. That's uh, a whole... Oh, sleep lands. Oh, I'm sorry, Saros. Well, that's a good slow, but... Uh... <laughs> You can see DFM were up at an advantage, and then they really were real fast. <laughs> uh, I mean, and honestly, this is not what we expect CJ to do at this point of the game. We expect this to happen... 10 minutes later, when they start team fighting around their huge uh, prowess is just fighting on the same page. It's just happened a little bit earlier this game. Okay, so CGA obviously had an incredible advantage here. But what did DFM have to do to try and find any way back into this game? You still have a lot of pick potential. We know that you can catch up people like the Zoe. Unfortunately, it is Arya's Zoe. We know that he's very proficient at staying safe whilst also doing damage. However, that is still... An, if you can catch him napping, and if you can... I mean, playoffs is the time to do it, and if you want to prove you're a team that can challenge for that title, you do want to say, hey, we can punish even the best players in their role in our region, because mm. you're going to have to do that in play-ins regardless going into Worlds. Steel gets himself this fifth mark, so still some signs of life there. Has the extra range increase. Maybe the Kindred can start trying to duel around some of these tanks later in this game too. Yeah, that's going to be the question for me as well, is what this Kindred can get done. Uh, it's gone, I think, possibly wisely here for the defensive boots just to be a little bit more so, survivable. Uh, uh, perhaps a little less wisely. No, I love it. Uh, the not defensive option is the Medjo I picked up for the zone. <laughs> <laughs> Rightly so. I think with the items in inventory, Ludens, Needlessly Lava Rod, and of course that 10 stack Medjo is exactly what you want to see on a champion from Aria. Definitely running over this game as far. Maybe. He's on a flank, but he's going to be spotted out. And has to be a bit afraid here. Flash oh, hook land! Grendel, how are you handing all these hooks? It's so good. Now the curtain call coming out. They want to continue chasing on. They've got the 4v5. Gang flashes out, but he's into a pit. He's going to take all the damage here. And oh my days, this Blitzcrank has destroyed DFM. Grendel, so this is his first Blitzcrank this season. His first Blitzcrank ever. 
and you, why has he not played it before if he's this good at it? It turns out it's not just the, the mid laner of CJ that can land the skill shots, it's not just the ADC that can land the skill shots, it's Grendel too, and what a turnaround this guy has had. From being the player in spring where we're like, ah, oh, he's always going to die randomly each game. Oh, this guy's holding CGA back. He is dragging them by the scruff of their neck this game. Game two looking much better for CGA. And I wonder at this point, would the Morgana have been the better pick for Gang just to deny the rocket grab? Well, they picked it in early, didn't they? They locked in the Caitlyn Lux, and they didn't choose to the ban the Glitz Grand course. As we were saying, it's not something on that match history. Maybe they thought, hey, they weren't picking stuff like Lilia. Lil Lil mm -hmm. Maybe they haven't prepared any of these new picks for this series. Well, at least Grendel has 2-0 and 8, has himself completed Zeke's Convergence and going towards his second item much further ahead of the game than Gang, unfortunately, who's yet to complete his first item. And I know Arya at 10-0 and 2 is going to command a lot of attention, yeah. and rightly so, but I am just going to continue heaping praise yeah, on this sure, Blitzcrank, sure. who won the lane, has won just so many of these mid-game fights. Nap now looking for Rebby steamrolling forward, you that's can see. Nice, yeah. Gango rolling down here. He can even start fighting for a long way away. The curtain call not quite off cooldown yet. Not time for a matinee performance. <laughs> it just doesn't, and I mean, there is a 40 CS lead in this top lane matchup. It just doesn't matter. It's a full tank set. You're not really going to one shot this guy in a side lane. Mm -hmm. And as long as Ebby is, as Ebby is trying to alt into the fight and get flanks, the showstopper is still going to be available and you can just shuffle him out of the fight. See, this set ultimate is going to be very important. We kind of said, well, DFM have gone for very squishy oh, champions. Already. If they got snowballed, they could be in a decent spot. But now Nap, Grendel stepping forwards. They get the flash. Fake Ripka, the showstopper, the power fist. It'll be a stopwatch, but Ebby flashes and does not survive because there's a paddle star. Now, curtain call in the mid lane. Pillar to slow down. Utapon dodges one, dodges two, and dodges not the fourth. <laughs> Doesn't dodge the third one of that consecutive. Uh, Dancing routine. Boss side of the map, uh, Arya teleports in. He's 11 0 and 2, has an 18 stack of Magi's and a death cap. This guy will one shot everyone on the map. They're already, we already said, no tanks for DFM. It wouldn't matter if there were at this point. No one is tanky enough to survive a Zoe this fed. And of course, he's not going at it alone anyway. He has been uh, the beneficiary of so much of CJ playing to him and setting up for these paddle stars. Yes, CJ have had fairly poor early games, but they do occasionally have these games where they just out skirmish you early and then yeah. snowball really and, hard. It's on the right members too. And this is kind of the reason why, you know, when we were talking in our podcast, got to plug that there. And I was, we were saying, who do we think would be the best representative for the LGL at Worlds? I kind of ummed and ahed about it and I thought, hey, look, if you really want that Albus Knox Luna miracle performance, performance where the LGL goes further than they've ever done before. Maybe it's a team like CGA. Mm. Because the problem is, yes, you have games like game one where they get shut out. They don't have a great draft. Maybe they haven't prepared appropriately for that kind of game. But then you have games like this. And you think, okay, with a team like this, you can land all the skill shots and actually look like they do have that individual talent which the LGL has sometimes lacked in previous years to take games off of the teams that they couldn't have hoped to in previous years too. Yeah, like, I don't even necessarily want to criticise DFM's no, draft think... just because things got, went wrong so early it was difficult to criticise things from draft because there was such a discrepancy from early I, on. I, I do think picking a zero... Frontline champion. Zero frontline is a risk. Yes, tank is a risk. Fair. And the Zoe too. I mean, fair. there's never a point in the game, even if CGA are down 5,000 gold, and they are certainly not this game, where they can't kill off someone. Now, with this five man stack, Grendel's got to shoot in, the gallery. He's going to find. He misses the hook for the first time, but now Grendel's in trouble. Takes a lot of damage and he gets shut down. That's CGA taking a one man loss. Now the curtain call comes out, but remember, you've got to be very careful of the light bindings. The curtain call immediately stopped. And DFM finds first look for a while in this game. That is the cannon going low, but the pad. Star misses, not enough vision. See, uh, Unica getting slowed there by the Storm Razor Auto. But now Gango has to be a little bit afraid. Light binding misses, but that one got a little bit close for Gumpy okay, for Unica. Right. So the shooting gallery gets set up, and Grendel ends up going down because he whiffs it, CCs in place, and nothing lands from the rest of CGA. There was a showstopper coming out from now, it means that DFM had to um, try and disengage themselves. But Arya importantly didn't land any damage himself. If he had done, would have had some more blinking health bars on the side of. DFM. The good thing for CGA though is uh, what were they fighting over? Well, it's CGA. They weren't fighting over anything at that point. <laughs> Maybe fighting over just vision because, of course, if they do get kills there, they can deny that bottom that side point. of the river. And yeah, of course, Baron is also available. Maybe that's what you're looking for. Look for the fight to present itself. This time uh, it doesn't go quite so clean. And Grendel, as you said, does go down for his first death of the game. Well, funny how CGA don't have the fastest Baron with the Jin and the Zoe, but they've got enough frontline that they can take it yeah. with pretty high health bars, even uh, this yeah. early into the game. Okay, so now Arya trying mm -hmm. to look for his own skill. 
skill shots. Oh, Ebby, no, you got to be so careful. I thought walking <laughs> into the Grendel there could have been an absolute the disaster. Grendel. <laughs> the Grendel. Um, he's definitely feeling like Beowulf's monster right now, that's for sure. There's uh, somewhere out there a Viking okay. warrior wait, turning in his grave, realising this particular support monster is causing a lot of damage. And Steel loses half his health bar there. He's going to be pretty unhappy about that. That is a light binding on to Grendel again, but just not enough damage Sleep. will follow up. Now the curtain call coming out and DFM can't look to punish all that much. Fourth shot does not land on Steel, but he's in a lot of trouble. Nap, now at the back line. That is a slicing maelstrom, but he's knocked away by Nap. The light binding isn't enough. The final spark isn't either. Nap going low, but gets healed. The ignite is enough. Gang gets that one. one for one, that right, but it is a hook. Now though, the light binding landing again, and it's two kills for DFM, but it is a two for two. Unica stepping forward, and Aria has just got so much damage, and it is the carries that are alive for CGA, and they're hunting for more. Still needs to run away, Bessie can, but he's on vision, and the paddle star claims another. Battlestar connects, and at the end of the day, it is a 4 for 2 better for DFM than my, they might have hoped, but it gives over Cloud Soul, it gives over more pressure on the map, and it is still CJ taking the advantage this game. And Cloud Soul on Trundle is fantastic for his mobility. It ain't mm. bad for Set as well once and the fight's engaged. This is a team that can use it pretty well. It is, and also for someone with a very low cooldown ultimate, which does aid their trade patterns, Zoe doesn't mind the Cloud Dragons themselves. Mm. Of course, that Cloud Soul active, where you end up getting that burst immunity when you use your ultimate, it's hard to use that on the right time. But still, look how much damage and how many times he's throwing out these long-range combos. Having an extra 20% CDR on his ultimate means this happens a second early. Earlier, and it means that, of course, DFM don't get any more of those ultimate CDR ult, um, dragons this game. They don't get extra cannon ults, extra lux ults, extra kindred ults too. And that might be a turning point its own way. Look at that face breaker. Brings oh. Ebby right out of the team where he wants it to be. Even though Ceres does land it, he only lands onto the Blitzcrank and the Trundle. It's just not enough. Yeah, he gets Gango just at the back, but it's just not enough, right? And then the Light Binding's here. You think maybe there's something, but look who's alive. It's Aria, it's Gango, they have health bars, and a fourth shot to, uh, well, end the Lux's life. Yes, and okay, so Cloud Soul down now. What this does mean is an early Elder Dragon. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something which DFM can Perhaps. play around. You know, that's always an option. That's one of the problems with Cloud Soul. It doesn't tend to be a game-ending objective, and it opens up one of those game-ending objectives. Oh, oh, sleep lands. Oh, my oh, dear. God. Oh! Heavy. Now in trouble in the shooting gallery and the teleport in behind. Nap! Just showstoppers him for the execution. There is the pot blossom. It does root people in place. The final spark is good as well. And in another game with a little bit more gold, it might have been good. But it's too little. It's too late as Gango and Arya run through the back of the team fight. And now with the triple kill onto the Jin, it ain't four, but it'll be enough. And it'll be barren here at 26 minutes into the game. Last game, we were talking about certain players trying to pull away. But what more could they do? CJ turn around and say, what? What more can we do is we can win the next game <laughs> with so much style that we can make up for and spare our blushes from that first game. Baron is going down, not going to be the end of the game off of that fight, but with that objective going down, I wonder if they're going to wait another five seconds for Nap to come up with Unicrush actually being quite low HP. Not sure they're going to have the option for that. Wait, yes, okay, so Nap doesn't get the Baron buff, but four on the side of CGA do. They're looking to close out this game with a 13,000 gold lead. Oh, you could see it. There was the pot blossom and the slicing maelstrom and the uh, final sparks. Well, in another world, that damage would have yeah. been great. And it doesn't work because CGA just have monstrous yes, amounts of damage. It does. And straight off oh. of Vision, Arya just pops Ebby. He doesn't actually get the follow-up auto. It would have killed him there already. And Nap just immediately knows that's the time to go. If Ebby is not in a position to ult the rest of the team, then, well, he's just not going to disrupt enough for them to have a turnaround fight. Utapon, in fairness, is having a decent game. And how many times have we said that? This split. Mm. He's been the guy to... Look at the bouncing bomb. Bouncing, bouncing, <sighs> bounced off the oh, head of Saras. No. And Saras is Nico. It's something which we have wanted to see for a little while. And you know, you're saying, hey, he really likes that matchup into Zoe. To which we responded, well, is it a counter into Arya's Zoe? This game is not got a CS lead. He has not ended up killing him at all. There was mm. that one play in mid lane, things got very close. It just wasn't enough. And now Arya's reached a point where he just has the shooting gallery, much like Grendel had so much of this game. And he's showing off so much. Yeah, and you can see how it's supposed to work. He was up in lane in CS. He had the turret blades. All that's good. But when the rest of the game falls, 
falls apart. It's not fast. When you get a teleport bot lane with a proto pill and pick up a double, teleport. that's good. Teleport. Now we're going to see the teleport coming in. And this is the first time we've seen a teleport flank from DFM in a while. But Aria silences it with a single paddle star and it's going to come to nothing. Mid lane inhibitor, turret cracks. Curtain call is called. And they're going to try and bring down everything here. They don't want an encore to CGA. They just want this one to be over as swiftly as possible. DFM now holding oh! around their inhibitor turrets. They don't manage to get a lot here. You can see the double AOE ultimates to do jack all. And that's a double for the Jin. Nap stepping forwards. A trip, a quadra. I apologize Looks for Gango. The, it's the Jin Penta. No, the Jin Penta is in 10-0-10. 14, 0, 11, Gango and Aria smurf on this one, and they'll even the series up 1, 2, 1. And who would have thought it after that game won? I thought that DFM would be going for that 3-1. Uh, Matt Swan asked me before this game, are you feeling confident in your prediction? And I said, yes, I am. Well, maybe I should have had a bit more faith in CGA and their playmaking potential because they're in it to win it. Well, to break this game down a little further... Step away for a moment or two, and when we come back, we'll be straight to the analyst desk. Welcome back to the LJL officially unofficial, bring you coverage of the LJL 2020 summer split. 
We just witnessed game two of match two of our playoffs, which is in round two. TJ tied up uh, in somewhat dominant fashion. Interestingly enough, we've seen two dominant games. Red side, te Red side team have won both of them. Gentlemen, what are your initial thoughts on this match? I think that CJ got themselves a lot of comfort champions. Mm. Like a lot. They had um, Arizo. We talked about him being 0-2, the split on it. But he's looked really good on it either way. Oh, right? yeah. We saw Gango's Jin. We talked about that in Champions like Maybe Gango is the best Jin in the LJL. Neither of them died this game. And they looked really, really comfortable in this game. Yeah, I mean, of, to emphasize that... Rendell's Blitzcrank, first time ever in professional play. Uh, seemed like it was an old solo queue uh, comfort pick almost with how long Blitz has been in this game. He was he was landing every single hook. Over on Detonation Focus side though, initialize. What, what was going wrong for them? It just kind of fell apart almost in the same way that CGA fell apart in the, fir in the first game. It really boils down to that bot lane play where Unica got there first and mm. Grendel could not miss a hook throughout the damn game. This time, Arya gets to teleport in with the pat with the proto belt on as well, which he picked up because, of course, he had. Uh, and he's off vision, so Seros can't interrupt him. So he's, he's, he managed to get partway down the river into a bush out of vision. Mm. He gets down. Steel does manage to get it, make it a one for one, which is great. But then they look for the return gank, and that's when Arya comes back in, and then it's another kill over. Yeah. At which point, effectively, it's looking a little bit dicey. The Caitlyn lane that was shoving in kind of is then, yeah, a bit of a CS lead, but has lost a couple kills. Then DFM look top to dive, and it goes wrong again. Manage aggro badly. Once again, the response from CJ is fantastic. Yeah, CJ had an amazing response. We have to give credit now to a player that I was a bit unsure about from game one and arguably first round of playoffs. And that's going to be Unica, who looked far more comfortable, right, Nightmare? For sure. And so he got himself Trundle. And if anyone remembers back to CJ's first game mm -hmm. against uh, DFM in this split, which was their victory versus them, it was Unica having a really good game on the Trundle. I am now wondering if this is something that CJ are going to start crutching on and just pick it regardless. Because we saw in this game, um, so Trundle is one of those champions where you think he needs to be picked into tanks before you realize even against Squishies, his pillar has so much value. Mm. He can start just setting up for the rest of his team. And who better to set up for than very proficient players of a Zoe and a Jin because they just have the damage to cut through these squishier teams, which maybe the Jin would struggle a bit more against the tanks. But then of course the Trundle would have dealt with them anyway, right? Mm. I may ask the question to both of you. Do you think that maybe Unico should be centralized more around tank duty? That uh, uh, Sejuani, we've also seen him play. Maybe other tank champions that could come out of the jungle. Set can also be a jungle flex pick. I know they have, I believe they've done that once before. Do you think that's something they should maybe Twice. start doing? Twice, yeah. Maybe. I'll put it this way, that honestly, if Steel had been there 10 seconds earlier, that could have got ugly real fast. Um, but his pathing wasn't was... there. His pathing wasn't there. No, he went. Well, he went for. He went for another. He went for another camp, and it was a fast level three from Unicare, uh, and that could have gone really well. So I'm not mm. sure necessarily whether it's going to be necessarily tank duty so much as making sure your first clear and first gank for Unicare is effective, because um, that was what got them ahead. It was the fact that Unica basically said, "Screw farming. I'm getting two buffs and I'm going bot." Mm, okay. Uh, he he went red blue. He went uh blue. He went red blue. Gromp into bot lane is basically what he did, and that got them the lead they needed. And focusing less on the pick so much as the pathing, I think, is probably more of an impact right here. Okay. Gentlemen, we've seen a bunch of detonation focus me's composition have a fair few counter picks in them. And none of them worked out. We saw the Kindred with that adorable Spirit Blossom skin. I must say that might... Great. I know I've got I've got a soft spot for Spirit Blossom Thresh. I know Nightmare has a soft spot for Spirit Blossom Ari. I don't know. <laughs> it might actually be my favorite one, the Kindred one. I'm sorry for a bit of a gush there. It didn't work out so versus this Trundle, which was a counter pick we'd previously <laughs> seen, <laughs> seen before from Steel, as well as that Nico, which uh, I know Nightmare has a fair few words about against Arias yeah. and, and Zoe's in specific. So yeah, I think DFM, um, the way this draft completely worked out, 
the the comp just didn't really fit together on what CGA had put together, right? Mm. It works in individual lanes. Okay, yeah, uh, Canon, pretty good into set, I guess. You, you you can abuse those kind of matchups. Yeah. Um, Nico, yeah, um, that's that's pretty nice versus Zoe. You can you can tangle Barb's the return of um the, the portal jump, and then we saw that all in go mm. pretty well. Didn't work out. And this is the thing though, didn't work out because is it a counter versus Zoe? Yeah, kinda, but is it a counter versus Arya's Zoe? He's mm. very good player. He is a very good laning champion player, and it and didn't I, work out this game. And I'll also put out, you know, actually, in lane, Seros was up, fair amount of CS, we saw the new 1v1, like, that's all good stuff, but the problem is, when the game goes so far away from you, sometimes the counters are never going to work because it's just too much of discrepancy in gold, and two, when you draft no frontline versus the likes of a Jin and a Zoe, it's always going to be a risk. Yeah. And the thing is, you could see that maybe you could see some fights where, like, if DFM were more even, it could have been a better thing. The Wombo combo with the Slicing Maelstrom, the uh, Pop Blossom into the final spark. You could see how that's supposed to work, right? They got some low health off, but never got any kills because it was just too late. Quadra kills had come through for both of the damn carries for CGA at that point. And, you know, you, that, you know you've taken the risk. The, you get too far behind anyway for those counters to really work in the mm -hmm. mid-game fights. A bit late at that point. Definitely a bit too late for them. No frontline cost DFM, maybe more than they expected, but only one game. There's still much more to play for. We've got another game coming up, but before we do, we're gonna have a short little break, reset our minds, prepare for game number three, a Crest Gaming Act facing off against Detonation Focus Me. Everybody, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> 